Bruce Lee's top nine rules for success. If you follow my work, you will know that I am one of the biggest fans of Bruce Lee. You see, I was born in Hong Kong when I first immigrated to Canada when I was 14 years old. The high school that I was going to back then, I was one of the only three Chinese in my school. So it was a very difficult period for me because I had no friends, I couldn't speak a word of English and every single week I was getting bullied in school and I was super skinny, probably 110 pounds, 112 pounds, like a monkey. And so during that period of time, it was, it was a very depressing period um, in my teenage year. And remember one night I was flipping through different channels, through cable, and I came across one of Bruce Lee's movies, Return of the Dragon where he was visiting Rome and as someone who couldn't speak a word of English. And as you know, then he would be kicking ass and, and taking names and beating up the bad guys. From that moment on, he became my hero. He inspired me to learn martial art. He inspired me to be a better version of myself. A lot of what I do as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, as a leader today, I learned from Bruce Lee. I've had the fortune to study under two of Bruce Lee's original students, Sifu Tat Wong and Sifu Joe Lewis. And today I wanna to share with you from my perspective, what are the nine rules for success from Bruce Lee? My last name is Lee, Bruce Lee. I was born in San Francisco, 1940. Really? To me, okay, to me, ultimately, martial art means honestly expressing yourself. Now, it is very difficult to do, okay? As Bruce Lee said, ultimately, martial art is about expressing yourself honestly, and it's very, very difficult to do. And in business, I believe it is the same way. It's very, very difficult to do because very often, because of insecurities, very often people put on this mask or this facade that they, they, they need to be someone that they are not in order to impress other people. Or when you're communicating with other people, it could be through social media, it could be one-on-one, -on -one, or even you're speaking to groups. How do you be your most authentic self? How do you just be yourself and you say to yourself, you know what, here I am and I'm good enough just being who I am. Easy to say, not easy to do. Look around, I always learn something and that is to be always yourself and to express yourself, to have faith in yourself. Do not go out and look for a successful personality and duplicate it. I couldn't agree with Bruce Lee more because at first, maybe you're trying to imitate someone and you look for a successful personality. It could be me, it could be anybody. And sometimes I see it on social media too where I could see my fans and say, oh Dan, I want to be just like you. Don't try to be like me, be you. Be the best version of you that you could be. You don't need to be like me, right? If I try to be like you, 100% I would fail. If I try to be Tony Robbins, I would fail 100% of the time. But I could do a pretty good Dan Lok, right? So be yourself, express yourself honestly, and be the very best that you could be. You are not ready. I know. Like everyone else. You want to learn the way to win, but never to accept the way to lose. To accept defeat, to learn to die is to be liberated from it. So when tomorrow comes, you must free your ambitious mind and learn the art of dying. To learn the art of dying. This is a very profound lesson from Bruce. What does he mean by that? You see, sometimes we get so attached to the goals. Sometimes we get so attached to how to achieve that goals. One of the things that I've learned from my Sifu, from my martial arts Sifu is that he said, okay, so you know, Dan, when you try to attack and you say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the opponent this way. And then you say, I'm so fixated. I'm gonna hit him this way and he's not gonna be able to block it. I'm gonna hit it. And suddenly when there's an obstacle, you're like, oh, then you're all tense. Oh, how come that didn't work? That wasn't going to, according to my plan, right? It's not, it's not happening 
the way that I see it in my mind, then what happens is this kind of stuff is the same thing in life. That when we try something, oh, it doesn't work, shit, it doesn't work. What happens? Oh, then you got all tense up. Well, what happens in martial when you got all tense up? You're not relaxed. You cannot react, right? You cannot move. You are so tense. Same thing in life. Where you know what? There's an obstacle. I can redirect, right? There's another opening, right? I can find other ways. My goal is still the same. That I want to hit the target, but the way I go about it might change. So the more sometimes when you try to win, the more you attach to the outcome. Sometimes it's counter. Intuitive, but when you let go of the need to control, doesn't mean we don't strive. Doesn't mean we don't try. Doesn't mean we don't we don't do our very best. But when you are doing that at the same time internally, you let go of your need to control. That's how you win. I have already made up my mind that in the United States, I think something about the Oriental, the I mean the true Oriental, should be shown. Hollywood sure as heck hasn't. You better believe it, man. I mean, it's always that pigtail and bouncing around, chop chop, you know, with the eyes slant and all that. I could relate with this so much that uh, as me, as an influencer, as a as a businessman, as someone who, quote unquote, have built something significant in the Western world, as a speaker, maybe the only Chinese speaker. That have been on TEDx stage twice as an opening speaker. When I was getting started, it is exactly the same thing that I experience racism. That people look at me a certain way. That oh, Dan Lok, you cannot be successful because you know you are yellow, you are young, right? You're Chinese, you're Asian, you speak with an accent, and all these things. That I am proud today. I have done a small part with what I do. Showing the world that hey, you know what? Even though I'm an Asian, in the Western world, I could be successful. You could be successful. Doesn't matter if you're Asian. Doesn't matter your minority. Doesn't matter your Indian. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter your background. I don't care. That if you want it bad enough, yes, you need to work twice as hard, three times as hard. You need to sacrifice more. But yes, you could do it. What is the highest technique you hope to achieve? To have no technique. Very good. What are your thoughts when facing an opponent? There is no opponent. And why is that? Because the word "I" does not exist. So, continue. A good fight should be like a small play, but played seriously. A good martial artist does not become tense, but ready. Not thinking yet, not dreaming. Ready for whatever may come. When the opponent expands, I contract. When he contracts, I expand. And when there is an opportunity, I do not hit. It hits all by itself. When there's an opportunity, I don't hit. It hits all by itself. What Bruce is talking about is your day to day. You are, if you are well trained, if you're well prepared, doesn't matter if it's martial art or in business, that you go into any scenario, you are well prepared. You have the self confidence that you trust yourself, you trust your body. That if someone strikes, someone attacks, that your body will know what to do. Now it takes a lot of self confidence. To let that go and say, hey, you know what? I believe that my body, my spirit, my mind would do the right thing at the right time and strike the right spot. It is not easy to do. It is also like one of the things I teach to all my students who are closers, who are salespeople, who are sales professionals, that they try to go into a sales call. They try and go into go on a closing call. They're well prepared, meaning that they're over, that they're looking at a script. And they try to force, they try to predict, they try to to follow the script word for word. That's not how it works. In closing, all depends on what your prospect is saying, right? What are they saying? How can you take 
what they say, how can you ask questions, how could you qualify them. It's like you're trying to go into a, a sparring match, a tournament in martial art with predetermined moves that, okay, if my opponent throws this punch, I'm gonna do like, do it like this, and he throws a kick, I'm gonna block it like that, and then I'm gonna hit it this way. It doesn't work like that. Same thing in closing. You cannot go into a scenario say thinking that, oh, my prospect is gonna say this, I'm gonna do this, and then he's gonna do this, and I'm gonna do that. That's not how it works. That's not how business works. Being able to pivot, trust yourself, knowing that you could do the right thing, train yourself over prepared. So then when you go into that scenario, you just let go. You just let go and let your training, let your skill come through in any scenario. The word superstar really turned me off and I'll tell you why. Because the word star, man, it's an illusion. It's something what the public calls you. You should look upon oneself as an actor, man. I mean, you would be very pleased if somebody say, hey man, you are a super actor. It is much better than, you know, superstar. I agree with this, as I have now so many followers from all over the world, millions and millions of fans. I don't see myself as, oh, I'm a star or I am, you know, a celebrity. I'm still just me, right? I'm just a man. So when people call me, oh, I'm a, I'm a YouTube star, I don't see myself as a YouTube star. It's just a platform that I have, that I share my message, my story with you. That's all that is. It just happens to that I have millions of people follow what I do and study my work and they enjoy what I share with them. I see myself as, you know, if people call me a star, I prefer my students, they call me Sifu as a mentor, um, that I, I take pride, I take joy in that, or they just call me a mentor. It's very, very simple. I think that's a more appropriate term, so I could totally relate to Bruce, what he's saying here. All type of knowledge ultimately means self-knowledge. This is probably one of the most important rules for success that I have learned from Bruce Lee, and that is all knowledge ultimately means self-knowledge. What it means is self-awareness, knowing yourself, knowing your own strengths, knowing your own weaknesses. How much do you know yourself? Most people do not know themselves that well. They don't understand themselves. You ask them, what is your purpose? What is your passion? What do you like? What you don't like? They have no clue. It's very difficult to make any kind of decisions or choose a career path or choose a business or whatever it is that you want to do if you don't know yourself or during, during the path on the way, achieving your goal and you are not sure. All the confusion, the lack of clarity, I promise you, all comes from lack of self-awareness. It is like a finger pointing away to the moon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory don't focus on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory sometimes we focus so much on a vehicle the mean and we lose sight of the end goal where are we going sometimes the vehicle the path the role might change but if you're clear you're focusing on your big picture Maybe in between you're experiencing some adversity, right? Maybe you are having some challenges. Don't lose sight of where you want to go. Don't lose sight of your vision. Don't focus on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory. This is what it is, okay? If you try to remember, you will lose. I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or creep or drip or crash. Be water, my friend. Be water. Be flexible with your approach. It also means to be able to adapt, not get so fixated in your own way, be able to learn from everybody else in different scenario, right? A lot of my business acumen and knowledge and experience, 
I learned from a lot of different people. It's not just, okay, this is the way that I've been doing it. This is the only way I do it. No, you have to adapt and change. The way you do business, the way you do marketing, the way you do closing, the way you do sales, you have to adapt. You have to be able to absorb, right? One of the things that Bruce Lee talked about is absorb what is useful, reject what is useless and add what is eventually your own. So at first you have to learn from everybody and eventually you will develop your own style. Those are Bruce Lee's top nine rules for success. If you wanna see more of these type of videos, comment below and remember, be water my friend.